artichokes and uh, wow. uh, olives, and then the the chow cheese with the Beyond Meat bird, uh, sausage. That sounds and, good. It's really no, it's delicious. It's, so, it's a Beyond Meat bird, uh, oh, sausage. Let me, uh, I always do good. this. It's really no, it's delicious. I always uh, have us on my internet so I can. Okay. <laughs> so did you make it yourself? Yeah. No, you just buy the pizza and then you put your, you, you dress it yourself wow. and it's all vegan and it's delicious. And a lot of it's, you know, the, obviously the olives and the artichokes are you know canned and, you know, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Wow. That sounds delicious. Yeah. It was delicious. It was delicious. We're live on, I'm, can you tell okay. them? Can you tell them I'm really hungry? So I just oh. kept kept your up about your, your dinner. My dinner, right? Um, I'm trying to do time restricted feeding, so you know I'm trying to. My doctor wants me to ideally stop eating at two o'clock, and that's really really hard for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm trying it. I'm working myself back a bit. Okay. I feel good. Good. Um, good. I mean, I usually don't eat anything till. 11 30 12 you know that's what i do and then yeah you know, I, I normally don't eat this late i usually try to eat by six you know if i can so like you uh, said you deserve it you deserve a you know to celebrate <laughs> the end of uh, Passover. <laughs> um so we have we've been getting we got a lot of questions about the mbrt microbiome restorative therapy sure. um every now and then the post will come up you know asking about the difference between animal biome donors and you know, uh, your donors and what you do sure. and, um, you know, oral versus rectal, the capsules versus the slurry. So there, you know, I think that, you know, and I, we've gone live so many times to talk about both and, um, but, you know, we're constantly getting new people and microbiome restorative therapy, or at least the term fecal transplants, I feel is, you know, um, like, you know, talked about so much now. And oh, absolutely seeing it everywhere and it's great. And so, you know, this, you know, group is kind of the hub for, you know, MBRT, uh, like experiences, you know, people talking to you, which is, which is an incredible opportunity. Um, so I really enjoy the questions and hearing your, your, uh, your thoughts on, mm -hmm. you know, um, so do you want to, do you, should we start by saying, you know, what is MBRT? And yeah, I mean, you know, the idea that, if we can take 80% of a healthy immune system from another animal and gently, you know, give it to another animal without surgically intervent, intervent, intervening with it, you know, why wouldn't you start with that for every single case, especially if the animals have been on any NSAIDs or antibiotics or pesticides or herbicides in their yard or living in a house that they use regular chemicals in? because the microbiome has been damaged from generation to generation. And each time, you know, the animal, the, the great, 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 great grandmother was on, you know, flea and tick products and having antibiotics, she may never have given that to her great, 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 great granddaughter, you know? So it, it, it just gets lost and you can have a generation every two years. So in 20 years, you could have 10 generations that were negatively impacted by what their mother was given. And if they were born by C-section, it's never even given to them. So they are living in a deficit. Obviously puppies will eat dirt, eat things in the dirt, eat other dogs poop, either eat rabbit poop, eat goose poop, eat horse manure. They are self inoculating themselves. And many of those things are, are probably good, but a lot of them may also have the same thing that the horse was dewormed and dewormed and dewormed and on antibiotics and it never got the full microbiome that it should have had. You know, probably the wild animals have a diverse one, but there's so much glyphosate put on lawns and there's so much chemicals in the water that many of the animals that the, the, the wild geese and stuff, their microbiome may be completely screwed up because of all the you know, runoff from the, the, the people's yards into the lake and the, the you know, the, um, you know, dumping of these herbicides into the lake, which it kills the microbiome. And so, you know, in my town of Hopkinton, I've tried to go to town meetings and go to the lake, save the lake kind of thing to stop the, the herbicides that are put in the lake because they, they feel like they're going to strangle their children with these herbicides. And my point is you're going to poison your children if you keep putting these herbicides into the into the water, but you surely are going to damage your dogs because they are, 
swimming in that and swallowing it, you know, and drinking out of it. Your kids are pretty much not doing that. So, you know, it's a really important component that people don't project the downfall down the, down the line. So, you know, having dogs that have been protected for years and having, you know, thinking that I was thinking about this stuff 30 years ago when everybody, you know, nobody was, not, not nobody, but very few people were thinking of it. You know, my house that I built is a solar contemporary house we built 41 years ago. And so, you know, I, I just, this was, this was what I was brought up to be this way. So it just was a way to just say, okay, let's follow through with the animals and feed them healthy. So I really think that our microbiome is, is, is one of the best that I, I mean, I don't know anybody who has better microbiome and we, I, you know, I still try to protect them by making organic food and healthy. So that's the, the initial thing is doing the microbiome, whatever kind you can get to get into the animal is going to be something to give the animal trying to find uh, and you know animals that are protected for generations and can you know really studied them for generations like that uh, I think it is is a real bonus for that actual fecal transplant so um, that's where I think you know our microbiome and the dogs that are our generational microbiome our sixth generation that are now you know there's one in in, um, in Eugene uh, that's you know that's in Ashland Oregon and there's one in uh, Los Angeles, and then there's one in, in um, New Jersey, and then also in, in Utah, these animals are part of the generations of these dogs that have been protected for so many years. So why would I have our microbiome, you know, be used? Well, animal biome now is using our microbiome. So you have to request it. Um, we started sending it to them back in November and they wanted to get enough stockpiles so that if they put it out there that they carried our raw fed organically raised generational dogs that you know we wouldn't have enough for one vet there'd be enough there to to help take care of a lot of vets so they have now i wouldn't call it a stockpile but they have the microbiome there and people can get it from animal biome it's different in the way that it's prepared they are freeze drying it which is I think a, a very positive way to do it. We still are freezing it in the cryo freezer and shipping it out fresh, not fresh, but without changing anything except freezing. And so we send it out from MASH in, in Hopkinton as either a frozen slurry or capsules or nuggets. And so people can get them. Uh, I, I want them to work through veterinarians. And the reason I, I like that is because when a veterinarian can see the difference in your animal, and you hope that they will see that and go, oh my God, I could help this dog and that dog and that cat and this one. So it suddenly opens the idea of doing microbiome. You know, you, you as an individual or a you know, pet parent as an individual, you may do it and then they never see it and they wouldn't even know to call you again to say, well, what happened, right? But if they are, if it's in their hands and they're doing it and they go, oh my God, I've had this irritable bowel case for two years. Let me try it on that. You know, so the more that they can, you know, sort of understand what they're doing, understand what other components to the treatment by building up the terrain, by understanding where that microbiome needs to go and what you need to feed it to make it stay there. And that's really, you know, a part of holistic medicine. So if they're going to, you know, put it in there and the next day they're going to give Sympartica Trio, they're going to kill the microbiome right off. You know, they're going to just knock it out. So they're just going to feed it and then kill it. You know, it's not going to work very well. So they have to have a more holistic approach to nurturing the, the dog or the cat. Wow. And so it's done, in, it's done in the clinic by the veterinarian rectally via a slurry, a, fr a fresh slurry is the best uh, way to get it. And yeah, I think the best is fresh without any freezing. So that's what's done at my clinic. And that's what's done um, at, at uh, Terry Sue Wright's practice, at Jerry Bukoff's practice, at um, Kathy Backus's practice, and also at um, Audra McCorkle's practice, because they have they have generational dogs that are there or have access to them, um, so that they can do these live live fecal transplants. And what we're doing right now with those dogs uh, is we're mixing with their mother and their grandmother uh, their microbiome right now because the puppies are seven months old now. And we're, we want to still give them some of the diversity that these generations have had. So they've got it. But I think getting something live as a big part of it, whether 
you know, there's a donor with the veterinarian that may not have all the diversity that my dogs have, but they could add in and do a mix in um, of the microbiome of these, of our dogs. And they get a, a live, yeah. you know, live, but it added to like, a, you know, a mixology, I call it microbiome mixology and mix it in. So if they have a dog that they're using for a donor, because it's, it's been really healthy, it's fresh food given, you know, and no over vaccinations, no antibiotics, and they have something add in, you know, some of the other diversities that, uh, that might be a beneficial to start growing in that dog. Oh, that's, this is awesome. So before we jump into the questions, um, mm -hmm. I have, I have just want to know besides, besides mixing your own, you know, your generations fit five and six, the puppies with your adults, um, and besides using the, the mixology with Hannah, and your dogs, not Hannah, all of the 19-year-old shepherd that yeah. we did. Were there any other mixologies you did with other dogs? Yeah, no, I did it with, with Geneva. Um, Geneva was was uh, almost 16 when she died and she had cancer for seven and a half years, just 15. And she had, so I felt with her microbiome, she had lived with malignant mammary adenocarcinoma for seven and a half years. And what was it that made her survive. I mean, what was in her that made her live to that? I, you know, this is ironically funny, but um, I just was watching TV and one of my, uh, one of my friends from veterinary school, or she was a student of mine and she's now been a vet for 40 years. Almost. <laughs> anyway, but anyway, her mother just turned 104 today and they had her on the news. And, you know, she said, you know, what, what do you credit your, you know, your longevity to? And, um, you know, I, I went to her hundredth birthday four years ago and I went up to her and I said, you know, you should be giving goodie bags with your microbiome in it because you have survived a hundred years old with all your marbles. I said, you know, and, and still active, you've got to, that's what you should be giving to your grandchildren and your grandchildren. And, you know, and she just chuckled. She thought she was like, what are you talking about? You know, but I, that, you know, when I heard she was 104 today on TV, I was like, wow, we gotta, we gotta get in touch with her and, you know, harvest that, you know, but if you can get a, a you know, a, a microbiome that's been able to live in our environment for so many years like that, let's celebrate it, you know, let's share it with everyone we know. Right. So, you know, and I was right before we went on live here, I was taking Tucker and shadow for a walk and, you know, Tucker was drinking water out of the, out of the, the, it wasn't a waterfall. It was like a stream. It was a stream, mm -hmm. a stream kind of a stream. And I was like, yeah, that's good for his microbiome. But then hearing you talked about the glyphosate and how it's I know, you know, I know. Really it's, just, it's like, you know, I live on a lake and my dog, these puppies are you know, not really into the lake. And um, I really haven't had generations that like to go swimming in it for years, but you know, I used to love for them to do that. Now it's like, I, I don't want them going in there. I don't want them drinking it. You know, I, I don't want them, you know, I mean, I think it's healthy if it was not, if there weren't so many homes that don't care, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we protect our property and, and you know, make sure it's, it doesn't have anything on it. But, you know, the water table that runs into that is, is I would not trust it to drink it. I know. Yeah. And, and that, that's one, that's a big con, you know, and, but I also like to think, you know, the, the dog's got to get outside and they got to exercise and they got to oh, yeah, be outside. And you can't protect them from everything, but so that's why I like to use, you know, ion because you know it's it's helping to shield from glyphosate and mm -hmm. protect the the junctions of the gut of the gut from mm -hmm. being leaky. Um, so anyway, let's get into those questions. Sure. Um, so we've got. Um, I'll just go down the line here. Um, Macy uh, Macy Fenton says I'm having trouble finding a veterinarian that will do the fecal transplant. And I asked for her location. She said, um, Tucson, Arizona, one of the vets I go to as an ozone machine, but I will not do the fecal transplants. Um, I have a 10 pound terrier that really needs a fecal transplant. Same with my 13 year old. Um, she's had animal biome, but she really wants yours. And, uh, you know, animal biome has helped, uh, but, you know, she's um, Dr. Randy Aronson, sorry, uh, pause vet clinic. But yeah, Anderson, he, he gets our, I think he's ordered our poop. Okay. Yeah. And he's great. He's a, he's wonderful. Yeah. I wonder so just why encourage him, just encourage him to, you know, to get it. Yeah. He know we, I know him. He's, he's very good. Uh, also um, in Scottsdale, there's um, Greenwood, Aaron Greenwood. 
a Aaron, good thing. She works at, uh, at uh, Langerhofer's practices and she has done the fecal transplant. I've shipped it out to them, you know, before. Um, so they, they have access there too, as well to the frozen. But now that Animal Biome has the capsules freeze dried, you can get it there. Also Novel Biome, which is based in Canada and any of you that are international, they're going to be doing ours in a, in a, in a freeze-dried capsule with a different type of freeze-drying technique um, that they've developed for their human fecal transplants. So they're going to be doing that and they want to be the, the, you know, the, the real international um, uh, distributors, distributors for our microbiome. So you know, those of you that are in other countries, you know, it's called Novel Biome and you can contact them and they are getting our microbiome to ship. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Um, you know, I, vet, I, I'm, I'm finding a lot of vets online that, uh, that people that I know that go to these vets that do my MBRT, but they're not doing it at the rate that you're doing it. So like if they have like, let's just say a dog with Cushing's, you know, while um, M, you know, MBRT, you're just going to that first. That's the number right, You one. know, it's like, a, you know, when you, when you go through, I mean, I've been practicing 45 years. Okay. So and I'm always trying to pick up another rock and trying to figure out, you know, what, what else I can try, <laughs> you know, and if it's something as simple as the microbiome to reset the whole immune system, it's like, before you go down and start doing even herbs, you know, do the microbiome so that the herbs can get absorbed. If that dog has been on any courses of antibiotic, which it's rare not to find a dog that has been on it, at least one course of antibiotics in the last few years you know, it's been disrupted. So let's try to go back and inoculate that gut and then add all the wonderful modalities that so many veterinarians have that can help these animals and hopefully get a bigger bang for their, 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 yeah. you know, that modality. I think it could be utilized a lot more than it is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Lauren Bashaw Waybright says, Doug, does Dr. Roman does Dr. Roman check each transplant or the stool samples of your dogs um, used for the transplants for specific bacteria and then match that to like patients that, that are missing specific bacteria? Not, it's not available yet. So, you know, there are 500 species in a normal stool and, and a thousand subspecies. The animal biome test does 16 S, which is 16 species. So if I try to only match it with that 16 species, I think I would be not doing justice to what we have available. So, you know, cause I don't even know what's in my dog's poop, to be honest with you. I mean, I, you know, we know that they're super donors. We know that they have changed lives and flipped them in hours sometimes, you know? So how do I, how do we, you know, how do I document it? I would love to be able to document everything in my dog's poop it may be years away before we have all the DNA sequencing and the RNA sequencing in the gut. And I think that is the future of medicine for humans is they figure out, you know, that this person has MS and is missing these 15 species. And Mrs. Jones in Topeka, Kansas has those 15 species. And that's what she is, you know, populated in her gut. And she'll get a fecal transplant that she'll, you know, it'll be a a transfer to that person who can get it. So the science has changed so rapidly. I mean, I was looking up, uh, you know, uh, hormonal changes, you know, just a client was asking me two nights ago and I started Googling it. It was like six articles on it. I mean, when I started Googling, you know, six, eight years ago or nine years ago, there was nothing, <laughs> you know? So there's so much stuff. And, you know, the more that comes out, the more we'll understand, you know, what these species are, but we don't know what the species do, right? We don't know if one species works with the 17th species that works with the 400 species. And unless you have the 17th species, the 400 doesn't even work. So, you know, at this point I feel sort of, it's almost, it's almost like, you know, just throw, lopping poop at things and they're growing. It's like, I'm, it's working. So at this point, that's really what it is. It's just trying to find really good uh, care that an animal gets so that that microbiome is as, as effective as it can be, because I don't really know what's in there. Hmm. This is just, this is not a question, but just a comment by Holly Vaccaro. She said, mm -hmm. Archer, Archer won't touch the poop. Um, I'm assuming <laughs> it means oral. She bought the bags. Okay. And um, so, you know, she said she's tried everything. He knows, he, you know, he 
can't get anything past them. Do you, okay. have any, do you have any tips for her? Well, yeah, no, when if she buys the bags, which are the cheapest way to get it, yep. uh, you put it in the capsules, you can hide capsules fairly easily, but you know, he, Arch is a smart guy. So he's going to figure it out. He lost his ability to see, but his rest of his senses are pretty, pretty much there. So, you know, having them disguised. So I, I'm actually, if anyone, you know, wants to do a video on how they make their poop uh, at, to edible, um, then we're going to have like a con, like a cooking contest or something. But I have one client who she, you know, takes it and makes it in little tiny balls. And then she puts them in the freezer and then she rolls them in, in, uh, in like goat cheese. And she makes all these little, little balls and has them in goat cheese. I have other people that put them in patties. I've got, you know, people are making all these creative ways of, of attracting their dogs to eat them. And then some dogs, you know, like Allie just ate it. Right. You know, and I have other dogs who just eat it. You know, they, they just, they don't have a problem eating it. Um, and then some dogs just would not put it, you, you're going to have to struggle to get it into them. So, you know, g- giving Archer, you know, he's over 80 pounds. So he needs eight or nine capsules is a, about eight or nine. I mean, four to five capsules, probably four to five capsules. He needs at least, you know, gets to be costly because the capsules are like $12 a piece. So, you know, and they are that way because each one is, is delicately hand packed with poop and it is very time consuming to do that. We don't have a machine that just fills up hundred capsules at once, you know, swish and everything goes in, everything is hand filled because it's, it's delicate stuff. We don't want to um, just sort of, you know, we're trying when to get it. That, uh, when, when is that contest going live? I don't know when, I, you know, everybody start to video. I think it'll be fun to have a, a, a you know, a, a, a whole section on how to make, you know, shit taste good or something like that. I hope, I hope they send it, you guys send an email out or something or make it that way. Yeah. You know. Well, maybe you can help inspire it too. You could sure. you know, have, start sure. having, um, I, you know, I had, I have one that I filmed 10 years ago with a client who, and it's so adorable. It's a, uh, an English bulldog who had lymphoma and hadn't eaten for three days. And so we tried to get poop into him in the clinic when he was there. And I tried to push it down and he just slung his face back and forth and all the saliva and the poop went all over the walls, you know? So I said to the owner, why don't you try some other way? Let's see if we can make it a patty. So he put, you know, made a lamb patty and put it in the middle and dog took it. So he, I said, well, why don't you do a presentation and I'll film you. And it was just this, this guy, he's like six, six, and he's weighs like 360. He's like a huge football player. And he takes the patty, he's making the patty and he makes it and he throws it, you know, throws one without anything in the air and the dog just, boop, you know, and the next one, he just, boop, and then the next one, he, you know, so, <laughs> you know, so then they asked, you know, has mask, you know, how, how, how did it get decay? To, how was it? And he just turned around with this big, huge, old you know english bulldog smile and just you know give me more you know but he lived for months eating and he hadn't eaten for weeks and you know and so that really stimulated his appetite because the microbiome that was in there was hungry it was my dogs they wanted to eat you know they weren't like all stuck with you know sick with cancer and stuff they wanted something to eat so yeah wow I think you, I think you have that video of the bulldog and the owner on your YouTube channel. Oh, we do. Okay, good. Yeah. Cause it's so cute. It's so cute. Yeah. yeah it's cute. Um, Ann O'Rourke says my dog Murphy uh, currently finished the animal biome capsules, uh, one capsule a day for 30 days as of yesterday. He mm-hmm. has, he has IBD and he's finally gained some weight. You know, his, his album level has increased uh, um, and his internist has decreased his prednisone. Um, which is awesome. She says, awesome. So I'm cautious, I'm cautiously optimistic and nervous at the same time. My question is, would he continue to get better, especially as his prednisone dosage will be weaned down slowly? Um, she, I couldn't find a vet in the area that has experience with, with the MBRT, you know, the, where does she live? Does she know, you know where she lives? Um, I don't, uh, Dr. Anderson from North star. I'm not sure if you know that name. Um, well, I mean, you know, many of these animals that, I mean, I, of course I do some testing to identify if the dog has this immune endocrine imbalance that Dr. Plechter describes. So if I find that they have a very low IgA and they have very weak, uh, adrenals and they have elevated estrogen and thyroid issues, that is sort of a, 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 
a point of reference that I, I may, you may need to be keeping these animals on more microbiome than just one treatment. So I have a dog actually last weekend, not this weekend, but last weekend. And this is a dog that came to me for almost five years ago, had irritable bowel, hemorrhagic gastroenteritis. She had been to two referral practices and spent $40,000 before she came to my practice and basically said, I, I can't afford to care for this dog anymore. If you can't fix it, this the dog's being euthanized. Well, four and a half years, we've had normal stools. And then last Friday night, the dog had hemorrhagic gastroenteritis. And she rushed it to the emergency clinic and they wanted to put it back on, hadn't been on it for four and a half years, metronidazole, antibiotics, da, 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 right? And she had the whereabouts to say, no, I'm going to go and get another fecal transplant. So we brought the dog in and gave it the ozone and the fecal transplant. And the next day has had normal stools all this week. Wow. So instead of going that route of killing the whole gut off again, she had the well, it, but interesting about this case, okay? So the dog's been getting one capsule a day for about two or three years. And then she realized the dog needs two. Now, while the dog is recovering, she's got it on three capsules once a day. So it's, it's be, what's happening is this dog needs more. It's gut is, is not is improved, but it, it needs more to stay above that threshold. But her insurance pays for it. So she pays, you know, it pays 90% of her costs. And she said to me, it's the cheapest thing I can do is buy your dog's poop. Because before I was spending thousands and thousands a month and the dog was miserable. And it wasn't getting any better, but I just now buy poop. But she was getting by with one capsule, which was very reasonable, you know, do. But now with three, it gets a little bit more, but the insurance yeah. does cover it. Is the capsule special and it, like it brings it to the down to the where it needs to be? And then does it protect it from the, um, what do you call it, the acid, stomach acid? Well, we, we don't know. Um, you know, we've never done a study where we, you know, I think it's going to be hard to do a study. I mean, we could do like, you know, where you have the, you can bury a, a micro, I mean, a, a camera in and see how it breaks up. But I think it really depends on, you know, that animal and it, if what kind of acid it has in the stomach, you know, what it ate before, you know, and it, it doesn't get, that's why I like to give our capsules on an empty stomach with minimal amount of food, allow them to try to move it into the small intestine before you put in a bunch of food and it goes churning and churning and churning and churning for two hours. So mm -hmm. we try to get it as far in. We have triple wall capsules as well. My hope is to get it down even further. And then we have it, you know, just these little nuggets. And that's an important piece because there's a lot of microbes in the stomach. And so if you give them the capsule and they need the microbes in the stomach, then, you know, then we need to go, you know, go further towards the mouth. And then of course we have the biofilm water, which is inoculating the mouth flora, which is contributing downstream into the stomach, which is contributing downstream into the small intestines and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Austin Lynn, uh, we did answer this question. I don't know if you want to repeat, but Austin Lynn wants to know, uh, do you offer capsules or pills? And if so, you know, why do you require a vet prescription and why do you have to, uh, why does a vet have to order it? Well, I, like I mentioned, I guess, you know, is I would like veterinarians to feel this is a modality for all of their patients. And if we can get them to open their eyes and see that there's opportunity to help their patients, and you may be the one who delivers that to that veterinarian. So that that veterinarian, you know, learns how to do it. If you get a veterinarian that won't learn, find another veterinarian. You know, you know there's, a, there's people out there that, that still have an open mind and want to learn as much as they can to take care of their patients. And, you know, they may be very hard to find because they're hard to find here in Massachusetts. You know, and I'm finding it extremely frustrating. They don't, they, I've got cases from them that they can't solve. And then in, in one day we get normal stools after nine months of antibiotics and one day, one day, and they won't talk to me. Yeah. So it's, there's, there's just this kind of, you know, defensiveness about some kinds of modalities. And once it becomes mainstream and it, it is sort of not yet there, but it's getting to be recognized. And, you know, they feel that if they do a fecal transplant with their donors, they are, they are at the top of the curve. They don't realize that their donors have been on antibiotics mm -hmm. and their donors are eating Hill's diet and it's, they're not feeding organic, healthy food. And what do they expect to come out on the other side? Mm -hmm. They just are not connecting the, the life cycle of, of uh, what microbes live for or live in. 
Now this next, you know, this isn't a question, but I, it's, you know, somebody comment, Connie, Co Connie Alexander commented, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's just my veterinarian doubles her price. It's very expensive to keep my dog healthy. And mm -hmm. that, you know, makes me sad because, you know, it's expensive to get the poop from mash. Like the shipping is expensive. So people were wondering, is there a way to possibly make the, and myself to make the shipping uh, cheap, more affordable for people, but then I said to somebody earlier, you know, that there's the possible, the possible reason could be, you know, these veterinarians that are ordering the poop f f to get stock in their clinic to do it on more than one animal, not mm -hmm. just the individual pet parent that wants to make the order. Um, and they're usually ordering a large quantity and it can be, it's frozen overnighted, dry ice. Yeah. You know. I'll, I'll tell you, you know, I really wish we could make it cheaper on the shipping. And that's where we're going to be starting in our practice to freeze dry in real time. So we're gonna freeze dry right at the site and start doing that and offering that as a sprinkle on or something like that, that we can sell. Uh, and I, we're trying to get, find a cost, but I, I, I don't know how well it will work in compared to obviously live. I think live is the best, right? Um, and then how does that compare to just freezing and putting it in a slurry and freezing it immediately? you know, is that a more viable product? You know, I will, you know, we'll have to tell through our experience, you know, how many percentage of people, you know, but we're not doing, I would love if somebody could help us write us some grants and, and find that out and figure it out. You know, how, how is this product just as good or not as good? And you're going to have a better chance of success if you do it X, Y, X way, you know, so it's, we don't have a dry ice machine. So we have to purchase dry ice and have it delivered. To go to have it delivered, it's an hour round trip. So we have to pay a truck to come deliver us 20 pounds of dry ice because we can't keep it for two weeks. It has to be every day. They have to come and deliver it. And they charge, I don't know, 60 bucks just to come and deliver the a dry ice. So, you know, we have to incur that cost. Yeah. And then the shipping next day air is so expensive. You know, you can have 50 pounds of dog food shipped and it's free because they, they are shipping so much of it. And right. so until we get, you know, enough demand for a large volume of shipping, we're paying through the nose through, you know, UPS, you know, yeah. and I hate doing it, but it's just, we tried shipping them two day air and the, the, we have to put twice as much dry ice in there, which costs the dry ice is, you know, another, you know, 10 pounds of dry ice, which makes the thing heavier. And then, you know, it then takes two. So we may save a little bit by doing two days, but then we worry, well, what if the dry ice gets used up? And then the thing comes like mush on the other side. And then, you know, all that microbiome is not in the premier state that we want it to be. So would, we, haven't, yeah. we haven't figured it out yet. We really are trying to make it much more affordable for shipping. Right. Um, but the product itself is, it is quite consuming. The time that it takes for me to prepare my dog's food. I work, I do it. It takes me about 16 hours every two and a half weeks to make their food. So, you know, hiring somebody to make their food for me and then, you know, cleaning their bowls and, you know, walking them, collecting them, you know, all the pieces of, of the production that is there. We started calculating that just in the last few months. And I'm, you know, we're, we're, we had have to have that charge for, them. but if we give somebody a bag of poop and they make their own, you know, and take it home and they make their own, then it's much more reasonable, you know, because we haven't had to take all the and then, high and needles then, out of it. You know, <laughs> so, and and then comes the and then comes the confidence piece, you know, to do that on your own to buy the ozone machine, you know, you know, then it's like you don't have a veterinarian that you know knows how to do ozone and can guide you and on the concentration mm -hmm. and the frequency and how far to stick the catheter, all that. And you, they, people may be nervous to do that and to invest a thousand dollars in ozone machine without mm -hmm. really, um, you know, what I mean, un understanding what it is and the value of it. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think, it, you know, I think as veterinarians start to add these modalities to their, their practice and they're not expensive modalities. I mean, you know, getting an ozone generator is not investing in a, you know, an ultrasound machine. You know, it is, an, it, it's a very um, cost-effective, positive way to increase, uh, you know, working with virus and, and infections. And, you know, I just had a, a case this last two weeks, which is amazing you know, the dog, um, it has nothing to do with the microbiome, except we did do the microbiome. And I think it has a big part of it, but the dog was presented, um, 
uh, is now, now it's just about two and a half, three weeks ago uh, to the university and the dog was, could not walk, was in what we call shift sharing disease, position where the front legs are like totally out and rigid and the back legs have no, can't move at all. There's nothing there. And, it, and the effect is in the cervical area and the poor dog um, could not, it was screaming, screaming in pain, screaming. So they had it at the university. The university spent, I don't know how many, you know, tests with MRI, CAT scans, x-rays, uh, spinal tap, <clears throat> all the infectious diseases, everything. And they thought it was granulomatous meningeal encephalitis, but it, yeah, it didn't turn out to be that. They were treating it for that, but it wasn't that. They treated it with different uh, pain meds, different antibiotics, different uh, you know uh, steroids, um, and the dog couldn't get the dog out of pain. So that was Friday, and then Saturday, a week ago, Saturday, two weeks now, Saturday, uh, they they I wanted to see the dog, and they and they wouldn't release the dog because it was such pain they couldn't release it. So then Sunday came, they couldn't control the pain. The dog is screaming in pain couldn't control the pain and they told the owners to euthanize the dog because there's nothing they can do for this dog. It's in such excruciating pain, right? So the owners um, you know, called me and I said, I wanted to get you in Saturday, but they wouldn't release the dog. I said, can you come in Tuesday when I have a full staff? And she came in and she, she was in such pain. She was screaming in the car all the way there. We got her in, we did ozone, we did laser, we did rectal ozone, we put prolozone over her neck and, uh, and did um, a UVBI with a hemolumen. She went home, she wasn't in pain. She was just relaxed all the way home. And I have a video she sent me today, but it's been progressing. If you guys want me, you want me to share your screen, I could show you the video. Yeah, you gotta uh, make, you, it. You make you a host. Let me find it. Here you go. Okay, let me go back That's to that. this. Wonderful. Um, I think I can do this one second. Okay. Um, let me see if it'll go. Um, let me go back to Zoom. It's got to load up. Oh, really? One second, one second. She picks it up when she goes. Let to me go it. back here for a second. I got to go in this thing here. Really? Let me go screen save, share screen. And this right here. Okay, so this is this is Ava this morning. Oh, you are screen sharing. Can you see anything? You see a dog? Yeah. Okay, one sec. Let me start the video. Girl, Ava. She picks it up when she goes to get the water. She could not girl. move she... at all. So that to me is a miracle right there. And so she had, so that's Ava. Yeah. So whoops, let's go back to, let's get rid of the screen share. Wow. And no, what second, how do I get rid of the screen share? Stop screen share. I, I can show you also this case here, which I'm working on with the microbiome, which I think is amazing. Let's see, I haven't finished it, so I can give you part of it. This is start, slideshow start from play from, are you, are you seeing my screen? Yes, yep, okay. perfect. So this is Macy, and Macy, uh, after three years of suffering with severe skin issues, all conventional medication was removed and support for the endocrine and gut changed this dog. So this is, this is, this is how she came in. That was her elbows on the left. That was her neck, she, her hair. She had been on Apical for I think two years and her skin was like, if you can see that, that elbow and that skin on the left and then the rest of her hair on her neck and on her body, I have some other pictures. She was like an armadillo and an elephant crossed. And she had gone to the vet school, treated at dermatology with Apical for a full year. Um, and these are some of her, food allergies and allergies and all the things. And she was treated with all these different drugs and cytology and antibiotics and Apoquil and, and had eye infections and everything else, right? This is how she came in when she came in to me. That's what she looked like laying down, okay? 
And then this is, uh, I think like a few days after. So the inflammation was not as much. And she had been on prednisone and had been on Apoquil and still was just a mess, an itchy mess. And these are just the notes, but I want to show you the pictures. So a little backstory with her first vaccine at six weeks of age. One second, Oops, go back. Um, if you look at all these vaccines that she had and every time she got vaccines as a one-year-old and a two-year-old, she was, they gave her antibiotics at the same time because she still has skin infections. So here she got like this DA2PP and rabies and kettle cough and was also was still sick. And the same thing happened. She had, it was on antibiotics. So, and then the, just, you're not supposed to give vaccines only to a healthy dog, but at one year she was on ketoconazole and Simplicef and was given the DA2PP and rabies. I think that's terrible, right? And then her second year, she had a bad ear infection, still got the vaccines. And she was on all of these antibiotics. These are the drugs she was on before she came to me. Simplicef four times, ketoconazole two times, Cytopoint three times, Momomax, Batril, Marboflaxin, Positex, Venbendazole, Cephaloxin, at Apoquil for two years and prednisone. And it wasn't working. This dog was miserable, right? This is our treatment plan that we did, which I'm not leaving up long enough for you guys, but, and then um, this is how we treated her, you know, but I just want to show you the pictures of her. We did the hemolumin, we did ozone, we did an MBRT, the fecal transplant with HANA, um, and we repeated her vitamin shots, but go back here. We did the, the, we did minor auto hemotherapy with urine, uh, which is a technique I learned from Frank Schallenberger that he does for people that have allergies. And we did the fecal transplant, um, from a four-year-old donor. And then at the, at the, uh, from, and she had her pups at home. So she was still nursing a little yeah. bit. Um, so I see you did the, you did the minor auto hemotherapy with the urine. That is so interesting to me. Yeah. So that's what we did for the allergies. And so she got uh, another follow-up eight days later. We checked her for Plechner. She had low IgA um, and her thyroid was low. Okay. So we, we treated those with the microbiome. Here's her animal biome. And if you look at her distribution, she only had two species. That was it. And then this is the norm, more normal you know, de delivery, but this is only 16 species. So she may have missing the rest of these species here, but she may have a hundred other ones that, that she's not, they're not helping her. Right. And then this was her, I, I want to rerun this test. She was allergic to everything on the HESCA test. Every, there's like three things she wasn't allergic to. Look at this one. This is her skin out, you know, topical, uh, you know, contact allergens. She's allergic to everything. Right. So she just was miserable, this dog, but the microbiome really changed her. I mean, it's, so this is how she looked, you know, at home, at home, when, you know, when she first started, this is pictures that she sent me from earlier pictures. You know, she was always with eye medication because her eyes were always soupy and irritated all the time, right? And this is with all the medication. This was her uh, about three, about two months later. And I wanted her to send me a, a really current one. She came in the car two or three days ago and her, she's got all the long feathers of a Newfoundland and her elbows are normal. <laughs> I thought they would never grow back. Um, and then we repeated, this is interesting, repeated her thyroid and she was now hyperthyroid, which I see in some of these dogs that are hypothyroid. Once we correct the microbiome, their thyroid seems to even out, which I think is pretty cool. Okay. And we did a rabies titer on her because we're not going to give her any more vaccines uh, because she has this disorder and she had a, a 0.4, which is low, but with her medical condition, I didn't want to give her any more vaccines. And we here we repeated her thyroid um, again and to try to balance it back out and, it, and we're lowering it right now. So anyway, this is, this is what her, some of her take on, um, you know, of what happened in her own words and. So I'm going to present this case this sometime this week, I think I got to work on it, but I just want to give you a preview, but this is her at home, but you can see this was taken about uh, three weeks ago and she's even got more hair than this. So, it, you know, and this is from poop and ozone and nutrition and not, you know, over and over again, using medication and um, antibiotics anyway.
So I will stop share, stop share. I know you've only seen Shadow one time, but you know, I've documented his skin issues too, and the poop and the ozone, homeopathics. It is just really mm -hmm. the ozone, really the poop. It balances them out whenever he. Yeah, you know, I think it does. I think it, you know you're you're using the ozone to get rid of the overgrowth in the gut, and then you're putting new stuff in, and you know you're you're just helping the balance things out, you know, and so. I'm yeah, hoping he, I'm doing a, a lecture uh, with um, Alex Avery for a allergy summit that they're doing. So I'm, they're filming me on um, on this this Thursday or Wednesday. So I'm going to present Macy's cage case because it just it's so clear. I mean, to have this intensity um, and have all these specialists trying to treat these dogs and it, this is what they look like. Mm -hmm. You know, it's pretty sad. Uh, yeah. So uh, Pam Brindle, she said she's did it. She's done Animal Biome and Dr. Romans. Uh, after the first transplant with Dr. Romans, I used the Ion supplement. I had improved results after Dr. Romans' dogs. Wondering about if I should continue with more MBRTs or any supplements I should add. I home cook, um, and she showed before and after of her Animal Biome tests. Um, so far. Uh, she's, she's, she doesn't seem to be getting any improvement on a couple specific bacteria on the test, mm -hmm. which is, she, she found kind of odd, uh, and not, not sure if it's possible to get it all good. Well, you know, I, I still feel that it, animal biome has the state of the art, you know, and I, and I respect it tremendously that they're doing the 16 S, you know, and there is a test two or three years ago, I'm more than that now because of COVID, but probably four years ago, I was attending the tri Tri conference in uh, San Francisco, and they had a, a machine that tested a hundred, um, hundred of the samples in the gut, and I'm sure it's up higher now. Um, but that's not done in the veterinary medicine right now. I mean, the, the my dog does it, but they don't have a good interpretation of it. So we need somebody like Animal Biome to go to the next level. But the machine is very, very expensive. They couldn't do it for the cost that they do it now, if they had to buy this piece of equipment, it's very, very expensive, but like, you know, like all pieces of equipment, you know, in a few years, they're more reasonable to, to start doing, but then, then the state of the art will be 200. You yeah. know? So you're just like, Oh, I can't, I got to do the 200. Right. So I would, I yeah. would rather do my dog. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like part of it, there's nobody to really interpret it. Right. So that's, that's the problem that, you know, where, uh, Holly has interpreted what it, you know, the standard is comparatively. So we need to get, um, you know, we need to start looking at that. So there are other companies that are looking at that and doing, wanting doing testing, wanting to, you know, have different kinds of nutraceuticals uh, that are prepared with the microbiome to give animals. So it is, it is a bustling, you know, industry um, and getting people's feedback and understanding, you know, what they need. But like I, like this little dog, um, Gracie, who has now gigs three capsules every day, there may be animals that cannot keep their microbiome alive. It's so badly damaged mm -hmm. in their in their gut that that my dogs are basically a patch, you know, are yeah. keeping them alive as a patch. All right, speed round. Uh, Betsy Dabbert, she says both my girls uh, at two years at two years had fecal transplants from Dr. Roman's dog in 2020. Uh, their animal biome test before MBRT wasn't poor, but I thought MBRT would only strengthen the immune system. I did animal type biome test a few months ago and it was much worse. Can microbiomes change monthly, yearly, weekly? My girls are raw fed, no vaccines, no chemicals. Mm -hmm. How often should the transplants be done? Is it different for each dog? Well, like I said, the test that they do is not perfect, okay? Um, and what I know about my dog's microbiome is not perfect either. It is a, it is a science that is not there yet. So, you know, if they find that there's the species that are there are inadequate, um, and the dog is doing well, it could be that the dog's balanced out and has now 200 other species that it didn't have before, but nobody can put their finger on it because nobody knows how to test for it. So it is a, it's not, it's not an exact science. I don't think that the, the 16 S is an exact science. It's, it's missing too much. They're not looking at bile acids. They're not looking at uh, enzymes. They're not looking at all the other components that are part of that, just those microbes. 
Right. And then I wonder too, with Plechner syndrome, it's a bit larger conversation, but you know, can, can the dog hold on to the microbiome? Right. Know, I, I don't, don't know if they can. I, and I think that <laughs> feeding them, you know, again, I, I had this, um, and again, you're feeding raw, you're doing all that stuff, but we don't know what is in your dog food. We don't know how much glyphosate is in there. Glyphosate, which is Roundup, which mm -hmm. is in pretty much all animal food. It's definitely in all of the cattle feed or the chicken feed that is fed unless you have your own chickens and you feed them on your organic pasture that you know doesn't have glyphosate running into it. They are on glyphosate. Glyphosate has a patent as an antibiotic for the intestinal tract. So if you are feeding that to your chickens and you're feeding that chicken to your dog, then your dog is getting glyphosate. And that could basically take away a lot of what you've been working for. Right. Uh, Connie Alexander, my dog has a couple, has had a couple of transplants, ozone at home, and his microbiome is now healthy since he's gone from 79 pounds back to his normal at 88 pounds. Um, my, he has Plechner. My question is some of his labs are still, Plechner labs are still abnormal, such as, you know, low or critically low IgA, GGG, uh, IgM. Um, do you have any suggestions? Um, vet says he doesn't know. How can I get the, the IgA and stuff uh, normal? And I, I, she's not doing colostrum. So I mentioned, you know, doing, yeah, doing colostrum. But, you know, it, it's, again, Plechner's test is, is never had considered microbiome when they first started doing that. In his last five years of his life, you know, we became phone friends. I never met him in person, but we would talk all the time. And when I started adding the microbiome, we saw shifts happening all over the place. And he was like, I never thought of the microbes. I always thought of absorption, but I never thought of the numbers of microbes in the gut, you know, because nobody really talked about it till like 2020, you know, 20, 2000 rather. So it really was not discussed in, in any detail. We all talked about gut flora, but we didn't talk about, you know, a hundred trillion microbes that were living in harmony. That wasn't a statement that we started talking about till about 2010, you know, and that's when I started challenging myself saying, let's give him poop, let's give him poop for like two years. And then finally I did it, you know, in 2012. So, you know, giving the microbiome as a, as a something to encourage or increase the IgA was something that I was seeing, but that was over 10 years ago. There's been five more generations of animals. There's been that much more glyphosate in the food chain. There's been that much more Apoquil, Cytopoint, you know, all these other drugs that have damaged the microbiome. Um, I, I'm not sure if we can, we are able to flip things back to where we think that we can get them. You know, it's going to be awfully, it's, it's challenging. It really is. Yeah. So many, so many details with this whole thing. Um, uh, Austin Lynn says, um, what are the, what are the benefits of, of pregnant dog microbiome? Well, you know, I, what I found with the pregnant dog microbiome is uh, several years. I mean, the, one of my first cases was uh, these two wire hair fox terriers um, and the male was trying to always kill the female and they were litter mates and they lived on the fourth floor uh, of, um, of an apartment house and had to walk them down separately two or three times a day. So it's a lot of work to walk to, because they couldn't walk them down together. They try to kill each other on the stairs and throw you down the stairs. So they had to pretty much do separate takeouts kind of thing. And so um, the dog also had severe diarrhea and some skin issues, but the aggression issue was the worst. So what happens, I gave him a fecal transplant thinking that it would help with his diarrhea, you know, because of the fecal stuff. And two days later, he's kissing and grooming his sister and loving her and cleaning her face and never had done that. And the owner uh, worked at Mass General Hospital and her husband worked at Mass College of Pharmacy. And so they're both very intelligent people. And they flipped out. They said, these are the dogs I wanted. I wanted two puppies that would play all day long and love each other. It said, he's trying to kill her. And so it, it, it showed me, and, I, and, and now these articles are in the, but we just talked about the articles about sex hormones and endocrine system is related to the microbiome. Anyway, so he, um, but that, that complete flip of him uh, happened in, in, you know, from that. So what happened was she, three, three weeks later, she gave the dog an interceptor 
and interceptor like ivermectin, like all these other flea and tick products, and for heartworm kills the microbiome. And th three weeks into it, he, she thought everything was beautiful, gave him the heartworm. 24 hours later, he tried to kill his sister, ended up an angel ripped up. So I had her giving the microbiome every two weeks, just giving some of it, giving some of it. And he would, he, she could tell his personality, he would start getting aggressive. She'd give him the microbiome, he'd be good again. He'd start getting aggressive. She'd give him the microbiome, he'd be good again. So she had given it to him 19 times, okay? Wow. And so finally she came in for something else. And I said, well, how's he doing? She said, you know, he's been really good. You know, I, I haven't, you know, I haven't given him anything for months, for four months, I haven't given him anything. So I looked at my record and it was when Vienna's mother was pregnant with Vienna that I gave that microbiome and it was the pregnant poop that's put him over the top. So my feeling was that the pregnant poop is probably the best of the best because it's, it's growing all these fetuses. It's trying to develop everything. Um, so, you know, I think that that's like my premier, but I found that the puppy poop from our puppies has been really wonderful too. So the okay. puppy poop is just another, you know, in reading that I did the scaffolding within the gut really starts it out as the in the puppy. And if that scaffolding is there, then everything can build on top of it. And my thought is so many dogs never got that scaffolding. They were dewormed and their mother was dewormed and their mother was on antibiotics and they got nothing, no scaffolding. Now we give them the scaffolding and we give them the adult and we hope that we can sort of, you know, like have a modular home go up, you know, like inside, like build it really quickly, you know, because it's all, everything's already there, right? Sheila, Sheila says, uh, does it have a cumulative effect? Should we expect symptoms to continue to improve over time or are results pretty immediate? I think it, it really varies. Some animals, it's like two days, they're like a different dog, whether it's behavior wise, they're not aggressive anymore. Um, if it's itchy and they stop it, you know, it's like, you can see those miracles and those are like blow me out of the water. And we've had yeah. some of those in the last two weeks too, just two, two or three days later, they're growing hair that they haven't had on their bodies for, you know, for two and a half years. I mean, that's like cool. Right. And then some of it, it starts to wane and you're trying to think like, what do I have to do to keep it going all the way up? Right. And so there are pieces that I am still learning each day from my cases and going, Oh, I need to do that too. Right. Um, or we keep them on the microbiome for longer, you know, and if people can make their own little bits out of the poop and not, we don't have to spend time making it, that, you know, is a much more reasonable way to do it. I give my dogs once a week. Mm -hmm. give a um, Maristol says my dog had an MBRT in February and then one week, one week later developed red skin on her back, which she's never had before, which I was uh, treating for dry skin. Um, but as of last week, it developed into yellowish brown scabs. I'm taking her in so they can sample it. It could totally be coincidence, but have you ever experienced the dog develop a gut imbalance or an overstimulated immune response from a fecal transplant? Well, as a homeopath, you know, you want things to come to the skin. So if the dog had a GI issue and it started having skin problems, that's an improvement. So that's the, the what they call the laws of herring. So if I have an animal that has severe GI issues and they get a rash on their belly or rash, I'm like, oh, yay. You know, the body's going, get it out of here. Let's move it all the way out, right? So the laws of herring, and people can read the laws of herring, is that they, they happen from the inside to the outside. So having itchy paws is like the farthest away from your body, right? Having itchy belly needs to probably go to the paws. You know, so the body's trying to push it all the way out to the most superficial part of the body. Because when, when you have inflammation in the liver and inflammation in the adrenals or inflammation in the lungs, you're a much sicker animal than itchiness, but people can't stand their dog scratching. Yeah. Does this help joint issues? And, you know, when I saw this question, I Googled, you know, joint and microbiome and there's a connection. There's a connection between there's the microbiome. connection to every part of the body. I mean, yeah. every part yeah. of the body. You know, whether it's, it's, you know, if there's inflammation in your body and your microbiome can reduce the inflammation, you know, wherever there's inflammation and, and the joint, you know, not that you want to inject microbiome, um, you know, into the joint from, you know, but maybe we need to do that. Maybe we need to take healthy, normal joint fluid and put it into a joint that's been infected. Wow. Um, none, 
I, uh, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. She says, is ozone given at home? How is ozone given if, if you're doing the oral fecal transplant nuggets at home? I think you're getting it mixed up with, in the clinic. You do the ozone prior to doing the fecal yeah, transplant. In the, yeah, in the, in the clinic, I usually do it rectally and do the slurry. But if, I am, if somebody's just taking their dog home and doing it, I still like to give them ozone. I think it just stimulates the whole immune system. Um, so I, we could do it ozone we could, with a UVBI, we could do it sub Q, we could do it rectal, we could do it, you know, ear insufflation. There's a bunch of other ways to do ozone. Um, I think starting with ozone and having that sort of getting the immune system just kicked up a little bit. And then um, if you're going to do rectal fecal transplant to help you get rid of the biofilm that's in the gut with the ozone seems, seems like a simple way to do it. You know, the standard in conventional medicine is to put them on in humans to put them on metronidazole and vancomycin, try to kill off as much bacteria as you can, and then do the fecal transplant, which doesn't make any sense to me why you want to put them on another heavy drug. Do you, uh, do you do probiotics? Uh, or do you stop, if you're on probiotics, do you stop it before or during the fecal transplant nuggets? To, I would say you, you don't. Do you, you can use probiotics. Um, I always yeah. did in the beginning, but I don't as much now because my feeling is probiotics are three or four species and a fecal is 500 to a thousand. So, you know, if I can have a complete database or have a complete relationship that's being put in there, then to put probiotics, which is two or three species is sort of, um, you know, it, it's, not, it's like, why would you want to put three species in there when you can put a, a 500? Except when maybe you know, like Ali had kidney disease, and even though she had many fecal transplants, I was very lucky that she got the uh, happy she got the, the sixth generation puppy transplant before she passed. But I was I was also giving her the azadil because they were kidneys. Yeah, so the, a the azadil, so right? Yeah, but you know, when you think about azadil, you know, there these are puppies that don't have kidney failure. What right. that isolated one or two species, right. you know? And um, I went to a conference. Uh, when was it? over 10, it was a, a AHVMA conference. And one of the speakers, and we were met in the elevator and uh, he says, oh, you got to come to my lecture. He goes, we're going to, you know, I, we have a new strain of probiotic that is a new species of, of um, probiotic. You've got to, you've got to hear about this. It's amazing. It's amazing. So I, that was when I was first revealing the microbiome restorative therapy. And so I said to him, oh, you should hear about the species that I have. It's really amazing. And he goes, well, what's, what species is it? What's, I said, you got to come to my lecture. You know, you got to hear, you know, what species it is because, you know, he was talking about his being the best. I said, I think mine's, mine's going to probably be better. And so we were kidding around. And so when I gave up, when I gave my presentation, he, he just, it, you know, he, it's sort of like, you're right. I mean, getting a complete microbiome is better than one species of, of, of a microbe than, you know, than, than getting the whole balance. And it was just sort of, you know, you know, you know, whatever. Yeah. So, so it can, help, can it help with canine diabetes or pain or pancreas disease? Well, pa definitely pancreatitis, fecal transplants work great. Uh, with kidney disease, ozone works great. Um, Di but diabetes. With diabetes, I haven't had it reversed in diabetes. I thought I could, I, they were feeling better and healthier, but I thought I would completely remove the need for insulin, but that didn't happen in the cases that I've seen. Well, we never know. Um, right. How can this be used with a dog with cancer? You know, we did one round of animal biome uh, and then we switched to probiotics. Well, you know, if you can give a microbiome from a dog, our cat, that doesn't have cancer and is thriving, looks like a good way to start for me, you know, versus just giving a probiotic. Yep. All right. And so uh, we have one more question that we'll sign off. And I think it's a good question. Uh, Diane Murphy says, what is the number one reason to get the microbiome restorative therapy transplant? To, to establish a new uh, immune system that is 80% healthier than what you have. I mean, if you have a healthy immune system, you'd probably just add on to it. But if your body has had antibiotics, because one course of clintomycin can knock your microbiome out for a year and you may never get it back. Same thing for doxycycline. So, so many animals have been on these antibiotics just because, you know, they had a broken, they had an infected toe or, an, you know, or were positive for Lyme or, you know, had a, a, a skin condition. 
And, you know, and veterinarians feel antibiotics are, they're our magic bullet. They don't work anymore. They really don't. And so what they're not realizing is that they are putting those animals into a very weakened position by killing off their gut flora. Mm -hmm. So getting a healthy microbiome that has been conscious about this for, for 30 years, not to give antibiotics, not to give pesticides, just seems to me like a logical place to to launch a, 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 a donor from, you know, and to have that given to your dog or cat. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Roman, for your time. I appreciate it. Okay, take and, care. Uh, that's all, all the questions. Take care. Have a good night. Good night. Bye.